you can get two things later in the draft. Complete raw products to do the Titans have, and then just kind of average physical characteristics. But we've seen Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, those guys turn into really, really good starters, right? On teams that if you build the team right, you can win double-digit games every single year with those guys. And, and I would say those guys are good examples of their character, their focus, their love of football, their work ethic is like pretty unmatched. And I would say Dak, you know, clearly, it feels like Kirk Cousins has mellowed out a little bit and people like him a little bit more than they did a couple years ago, where Dak has just kind of universally been like pretty highlight. Like people love the guy. Yeah. You know, that, that really matters. And that's to me what separates guys. Like you talked about the thing where you just never shake it when you see things. Like, how am I ever? The highest level of that was the Foles Wentz thing. It feels like it derailed Wentz and probably brought some insecurities in him. And when Jalen eventually came in, because think about Jalen, who was a second round pick, who did not throw the ball as well as Purdy a year ago. I mean, he couldn't really throw. And now he's he looks fucking awesome. But the one thing Jalen really separates himself on is the character and tangible stuff is off the charts. I mean, the teammates and the way he works and his just focus of not a huge celebration guy. Like when they, if you watch him when they score touchdowns, he's not like, he's not a fuck around guy at all. I want Purdy to do the nose thing. What? Who did that the other day? Throat slash? Someone did a throat slash. I NFL game? There. Oh, maybe not. Maybe you're right. That was, you're not allowed to do that, huh? <laughs> uh, since you brought up, let's go back to uh, Brock Purdy's scouting report, John. You you sent me this. We've got the uh, measurables here. And um, we've got this by percentile. Can you see this here? Yeah. Those of you, for those of you listening, I'll read it. But some of these, he is so bunched in like the, <laughs> in like the bottom 10% in some of these that you can't even tell what's what. So his vertical jump was in the 10th percentile. His height looks like it's in the 7th percentile. His weight, the 18th percentile. His wingspan is either in the 1st or 2nd percentile. <laughs> By the way, 1st percentile means you're at the bottom, not at the top. <laughs> Arm length, 1st percentile, number one. There's no lower percentage than number one. Hand size, 26th percentile. 10-yard split, 95th percentile. I've been telling you, guy. And the 40-yard dash, the 45th percentile. Which now, isn't bad either, I would say, if you're in the this, middle of the is pack. This, of, this is of the 2020. What is this just of the draft class or just all quarterbacks that come through the combine? I think I think this, I think this is NFL quarterbacks. So his his closest comp in terms of these measurables, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, which is weird, but well, I think the Kyler stuff, I think it's just just based on those four things, the overall average, right? Because Kyler would skew higher in the 40, but the height right, right, and the arm length and stuff would be low. To me, he's kind of a hybrid. Like, he moves a lot better than Baker. Clearly not anywhere close to Kyler. But size-wise, it feels like he's closer to Kyler than, like, the thickness of Baker. And there was another name, I think, that's a little farther down is Zach Wilson. I actually think, if to me, if I was going to give a comp, I would go he's like a hybrid of Zach Wilson and Baker Mayfield. It's interesting. I feel like Zach's arm is... is 100%. He throw, Zach throws it better, but to me, he moves. One thing Zach brought to the table is kind of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Corral is another guy who's a pretty good athlete who got I hurt his foot this year. He's been on IR. but Because the scattered report of a 10-yard split, it's what the offensive linemen always say. Like, why are you making me run a 40? Right, if you look, Trent Williams in the Niners run a movement offense, right, with their offensive line. The farthest he ever goes is probably ten yards. Like the ten yard split for linemen, O line really, and D line, is much more important than the forty. Well, a non running quarterback like Kyler, to me, Kyler's forty matters. Lamar's forty matters. Like how fat? Because you're going to be running. This guy's does not. But his ten yard split, like how quick are you? Not only matters, I would say it's immediately showing up. Explain what a 10-yard split is. Just the first 10 yards is your 40. So, like, how quick you are in a shorter period of time. Because some people are quicker than fast. That's like a scouting term. And to me, clearly, this guy is quicker than fast. Like, Kyler Murray is explosive and fast. <laughs> and he's quick. And he's he's got it all. Like he checks all the – anything that's under the speed uh, verbiage, he would check. This guy does not. Like, this guy does not have high-end speed. 
I would not say this guy's a threat to really run, but he is a threat to move and scramble. And that, to me, is immediately shown up in some of his jukes out, uh, juking out D linemen, running away, but then stopping the pass. What I like about this guy through his two games is he knows his limitation. Like when he takes off and he jukes out a D lineman or a blitzing linebacker, he doesn't then try to run, right? He tries to give himself space to then make a pass. It's what Russell Wilson and even Deshaun Watson, pre massage therapist, was great at. Deshaun was not a runner, he was a scrambler. And Russell, to me, is like the greatest scramble to throw guy I, we've seen in the last like decade. If you're good at that, you create so many more plays. It's what I think the Niners wanted from going Jimmy to Trey, the extension. And you've always said this, like part of what makes a great quarterback is taking the great play callers play when it fails, you still make a play. And Mahomes is, you could argue, the best we've ever seen. I mean, he's incredible what he does with that. And he's got one of the greatest play callers of all time. Yeah, Favre was the guy we grew up on that just created Holmgren, who was also a great play caller. And I would say older Elway probably would have been pretty incredible for like Mike Shanahan if he was younger. Right, he, he was more playing in the offense. And even they've said like the reason we were so good is because we had Terrell Davis. When you can keep plays alive, it's why I think we get frustrated a lot with Kyle because sometimes his plays just don't work and then his quarterback can't really do anything. And the last couple of weeks we've seen like, God damn. I That's would equate it to like um, a car that drives with artificial intelligence, right? Car, you can like a Tesla can drive AI or whatever they, it's not, maybe it's not called AI, but every once in a while, you're still going to need somebody who can process kind of a real environment to save a car from a particular situation that it hasn't handled yet. That's why self-driving is just there's so many scenarios that these you have to put into these algorithms to get David Lombardi anything. just took one the other day. Do you see him? That. Yeah, Cruz. Would you go? Um, would you get in that? I mean, if it's driving around the city at slower speeds, maybe. But you know, I I think um like the best coaches kind of think, or you know, we think sometimes the best coach. I just you call the play and then whatever work you know, like you can manage the whole game from the sideline, but you you can't. Like sometimes you need somebody to take over the wheel because it's there's there's so many variables. There's 22 people on e there's 11 people on each side of the football. There's just a million variables that you can't account for. And sometimes you got the perfect play called, but they got the perfect play dialed on the other side. Um, and how do you measure that? in a person when you're scouting them. That's just one of those things, you know, job interviews. If you're talking to somebody you don't know, you can put them through, a, you can give them some personality tests and give them some scenarios. And I can say, all right, here's an email inbox that a manager would have. You have an hour to answer all these emails and delegate. That's cool. But I don't really know what it's like six months in when you're not getting any sleep and you're stressed and you don't really know until you're in the foxhole. You know, and that's where the stuff with measurables are fun and drafts are fun and it all matters. Like it's all a real way to try and evaluate. I just pulled up Russell Wilson's for those watching, but you know, you don't really know until you're in that spot with somebody. What are they going to do? Who wouldn't, how, wouldn't, you how say, would, wouldn't you say Russell's right there before he sucked this year that like describes this his is career. just Russell's 2012. This is what this is. Wouldn't you say that that those boxes describe his career? <laughs> um, fifth percentile in height, or actually less than that. Second percentile in height, fifth in weight, 21st arm length. But he was off the charts in in some of the F. I mean, well, not off the charts. Maybe three cone 74th percentile. Is that good for a quarterback? Yeah, pretty damn good. So that means his like change of directions fantastic. His 20-yard shuttle, like going back and forth, is fantastic. Vertical jump, to me, always describes like a great athlete. If you can have a high vertical jump, I mean, the, his 40-yard dash was fantastic. Like, his movement, you just, like, when you just close your eyes and you think of Russell playing, it that doesn't encapsulate how good his arm was, but, like, the movement shit was elite. O elite would be strong, but, like, high end. Well, like, he's somewhat comparable to Johnny Manziel. For Johnny, it didn't, it didn't translate to the NFL. For Russell, it did. Russell had a much better arm and just higher level guy. Yeah, yeah. These are humans. We're putting numbers on them. But is there is there anything here from a scouting perspective in Brock's 
that would tell you to do anything but draft him in the seventh round? No, 